Hello Vinyl Community! Welcome to another video and uh, let's talk about the records I've been listening yesterday. Let's start with this one. Alf by Alison Moyer. Now this was Alison Moyer's first solo album a year after uh, Yazoo had split up. So this is a nice uh, solid uh, pop album. Um, it's Probably not my favorite by Alison Moyer, but it was a nice achievement. Um, I mean, uh, Yazoo, at least by my account, was really a wonderful musical project. And unfortunately, they did only two albums and I really loved their music. So, um, that's the inner sleeve. So, uh, I was really hooked up by this wonderful voice. So I enjoyed listening to this album because, um, I mean, Alison Moyer is just a brilliant singer and uh, it's a very unique voice. It's one in a million, so to speak. Um, but my favorite album by her is certainly her third album, Hoodoo. And uh, I like this quite more. It has more depth. Uh, I like the compositions better, the atmosphere. It's a much darker album in comparison. Now the next one, um, it's a bit of a crazy choice at first sight. She's the Boss by Mick Jagger. Now uh, the prime reason why I bought this album a while ago. Um, well, on, on the one hand I kind of remember it from, uh, from uh, the old days. But um, I also figured out that this was co-produced by Bill Laswell and Material which is a project I really like, so that alone is a reason uh, to get this album, just to listen to it again under a new perspective. Only, only some of the songs have been produced, co-produced between Mick Jagger and Bill Laswell. The other songs has been a co-production with Nile Rodgers, so, um, so those are some uh, big names. Um, yeah, I mean, it's... Uh, it's not a it's not a superb album but uh, there are some really good tunes on it um, some of the tracks uh, mostly just another night for example or, or she's the boss it's kind of good songs um, I don't like all of it but uh, why not from time to time uh, it was Mick Jagger's first solo album as far as I remember this was uh, mid 80s if I'm, uh, yeah, exactly, 1985. Um, well, as far as I remember, it was a bit of a reason for a certain uh, animosities between uh, Mick Jagger and Keith Richards, who was not thinking that this is a good idea for Mick Jagger to do this. So the next one, uh, Blaze of Glory, by uh, my favorite uh, Joe Jackson. Now this is... Uh, Joe Jackson's last album in the 80s. Um, some would say this is sort of the last of the great albums that he made in the 80s. Uh, it's not my favorite. I prefer Night and Day and certainly Body and Soul. But it's quite a good album though. Now, uh, just a year later, this album came out. Violator, Depeche Mode. Uh, not much needs to be said about this album. A um, lot of people think that this is uh, Depeche Mode's best album. Uh, I tend to agree on this one. Um, it's also, it's also, it was, it was the tour for this album when I saw Depeche Mode live in 1990 uh, and uh, in Munich, and. Uh, yeah, this was quite a crazy concert because I was used I was used to to go I was used going to sort of underground venues with the mostly unknown bands playing to 150 people, and uh, this was the one time when I experienced uh, the madness uh, of a uh, of superstardom. Uh, so this. I mean, inside the inside the Olympia Hall in Munich, all hell broke loose. This was insane. I've never seen something like that before, 
I mean, I was like, yeah, maybe 15 steps from the stage. So every two or three minutes, they had just to remove some unconscious girl from the first row. You know, there were all these securities under the stage and it just happened like every five minutes. You know, I just saw them carrying out these, these uh, motionless uh, female bodies. This was completely insane. And um, there was so much energy in the room that uh, from time to time I just felt the pressure from both sides and it kind of carries you like, like, like you've been like risen for a second and when you came down to the ground again you've, you've been like five steps to the right or five steps to the left. Completely insane. Yeah, so uh, this was my uh, Depeche Mode experience uh, in 1990. And uh, so uh, this was the last time when they kind of sounded fully in this uh, sort of a new wavy electronic mode. Yeah, and I'm glad I've been there. Um, now the next two albums, completely different story. Um, and a good examples of uh, beautiful vinyl production. The first one is uh, the reissue of Possible Musics by John Hassel and uh, Brian Eno. And uh, now uh, if you are into ambient music and the history of ambient music, this is a big game changer. This album uh, that uh, came out I think 1980 or maybe 81. I should look this up. I'm unprepared. Uh, yeah, I don't see it. Oh, come on, which year was that? Yeah, I looked it up. It was 1980. I should trust myself a little more. So, um, if you are into the roots of ambient music, um, this is an extremely influential album. Especially if you look at my favorite band, uh, Oyukai Conjugate. Um, which, uh, when I started to listen to Oyukai Conjugate, I didn't know this album, so I thought, wow, these guys are original, this is, I've never heard this before, this is amazing. They came up with a whole new musical style, but uh, <laughs> then I listened to this and I realized, ah, ah, I know where this is coming from. <laughs> so this is a, this is a marvelous uh, masterpiece uh, of, uh, of sort of an organic, organic uh, ambient music. Um, it's not the kind of uh, ambient music where it's basically made of this huge emptiness. So on records you usually hear only a lot of crackling. In this case, there's a lot of there's a lot of sound, and so this is this works pretty well on on, on vinyl. But this is a reissue by Glitterbeat from 19 uh, no from um, sorry from 2014, which comes and don't I like this kind of stuff, which comes with a extra CD inside. Just look at this. This is just added to the album. Isn't that wonderful? Yeah, and for a good price. I think I paid like maybe 27 euro for it or something. So, um, a real milestone. Yeah, and finally, the youngest album in my collection is the new album by Tinari Wen. And this came just a couple days ago. Uh, it's called L1. I've already listened to it uh, at least three or four times because after I bought it, after I purchased it online, uh, I already got a sort of a download code. So I already had it on uh, on MP3s before this arrived. And then after it arrived, I, I opened the package just to realize that it also includes a CD. Now I paid 20 euro for this. Isn't that amazing? You get a double album with a CD with download codes. It's really wonderful. So it deserves to be mentioned that this was released on the Wedge uh, label and I still haven't opened it. So uh, what about another unpacking moment in my videos? Um, so uh, because it's it's a gatefold, it's a gatefold sleeve with uh, this motif on the back, but uh, I don't know how this gatefold looks inside. Uh, so uh, this is a first time for me too. And let's do this. Oh, okay. Let's not let's not destroy anything. Oh yeah, some cellophane action here. 
and it's open the new Tinari Wen. Now, um, as you probably know, these guys are Tuareg, so uh, they are kind of a mixed bunch from people that are from south of Algeria and north of Mali. Um, also, what I find fascinating is that their albums have always these five symbols here and uh, this is actually the, the sort of the, the traditional it's a modern it's a modern uh, version of the of the Tuareg script that they use so those are not just some fancy symbols it's actually uh those are the the consonants of the word Tinari Wen so uh this is actually a real word pretty cool and let's open uh, the gatefold. Yeah, I still haven't seen it. You've seen it now. I have not. <laughs> so let me have a look. Oh, brilliant. Yeah, black and white photographs. That's quite interesting atmosphere. Yeah, love this. So uh, let's look inside. Uh, so those are the, the inner sleeve for the one disc. And this is uh, the inner sleeve for the other. Yeah, let's have a look at the labels. Oh, this looks... oh yeah. Very heavy vinyl. Completely wobble free. Yeah, I mean, that's... I mean, that's some value for your money. So, uh, oh yeah, the promised CD, isn't that wonderful? Yeah, I'm quite happy with this purchase. Yeah, and the music is wonderful. I mean, I knew some of the previous stuff, which is always great, but uh, this might even be the best album. Pretty cool. Now they are, of course, uh, playing a mixture of traditional music, sort of spiced up with the... Uh, well, the, I don't want to call it bluesy, because it's not really bluesy, but it's sort of a, a Stratocaster guitar-oriented uh, musical patterns. I mean, you could call them the Grateful Dead of the Sahara, if you wanted to. That's actually not such a bad description. Yeah, so, L1 by Tinari Wen, and uh, that's it for today. See you next time, and bye-bye.